Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the St. Michael Spiritual Hour, where we believe in a positive spiritual attitude for positive spiritual attainment. This show is sponsored by St. Michael Spiritual Church, P.O. Box 578, Crete, Illinois, 60417. Go to drmichaelochapman.com for more information or call us at 708 708-7520-895, 708-7520-895. Call, uh, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Dr. Mike Lowe, YouTube, Vimeo. Uh, we're excited to be a part of whatever you do. And go to drmichaelochapman.com for more information. The purpose of this program is to lift people up as we lift up the name of Jesus. We want to share positive energy and stories with you to help you think, meditate, and spiritually make it. This is your hour. God bless and God keep and strength with you. It is my prayer for you on today. We love you. Uh, we're always good to see you, no matter what time you're listening, where you are in the world. You know, we got service people all over the world that listen to our program. We want you to know that you are not forgotten. You are not forgotten. We continue to lift you up uh, wherever you are in the world. And whatever time it is, it is the right time for you to listen. Whatever day it is, it is the right day for you to listen and get your message on today. We're going to talk about uh, today not being defiled and how you get your uh, elevation, how you reach uh, uh, elevation in the spirit and how you want to be better than you are now. You want to be closer to the source. And that's what we're talking about on today, being close to the source, not defiling your body at any point. So you can't be uh, serving two masters. You can't be doing dirt. You can't be doing all those other things. And then when it comes to the house of God or being close to God, you want to be closer to him. I'm saying prevention is better than the coming in at the back end when you need help, you need prayer, you need all those things to work out for you, yet you haven't been living uh, 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 a sacred life. You haven't been living uh, a good life. As Professor Rodgers said, if you haven't done anything for Christ, why are you asking him to help you if you haven't done anything? If you're not living right, what is it that you're asking him to do for you? So we're honored to be here with you on today. God bless and God keep you. And thank you for listening on today. We're sending a lot of prayers out to those who need prayer, those who need lifting up. You know, we believe that the glass is half full. It is not half empty. I hear you out there. It's not half empty. So we affirm that on today. In the midst of all of that, we're expecting you to be, uh, to take care of your body, Keep your diabetes in check. Please keep your diabetes in check. We expect you to do that uh, on a daily basis. Keep your diabetes in check. How you do that? Uh, yearly program, yearly, uh, uh, yearly um, visit with your provider, with your doctor, uh, and schedule it every year and then go. Don't schedule in cancer, but you have to go. All right. A plan to uh, talk to your provider and ask them questions that that's, things don't look right, don't feel right. Um, that's the time to ask what's going on and then get an answer from them. All right. Take your lab test. The last A1C result was and write it down. Uh, your next A1C is scheduled for what time of what day. Also, uh, kidney lab tests are scheduled for and what time and what day. Eye exam. Have your eye exam uh, scheduled. And then foot care. Make sure you pay attention to your feet. Uh, if they're swollen, if you can't think, if you can't feel um, your toes, you can't, uh, they're, they're swelling, there's pain, you have to have your feet checked because we know that that could be an uh, area where diabetes is, flam is uh, flaming in you. So uh, don't wait and don't say that'll go away. Go get them checked out, okay? I mean, I'm, I'm encouraging you to do that. Stay with the program on today. Also, stress. Stress will kill you. No stress. Uh, no stress. My son said, no stress. Be blessed. So don't stress over things. How can you do that? How can you tell? You can't sleep. Uh, you're not eating properly. Um, uh, you're nervous. Again, uh, uh, you're not feeling uh, your hands are tingling, shoulder problems. I feel like your shoulders are, are weighted, pressure on your chest. All those things eat more than you normally do. So I'm saying to you, uh, don't stress out. Don't do things that you wouldn't normally do. Do things that you would do to uh, relieve the stress. We talked about gardening. Uh, um, the curve is there, painting. If you paint, paint. Horseback riding, uh, getting out of the normal routine, 
uh, a friend, a friend of mine, he used to, him and his wife used to do crossword puzzles. I thought that was fantastic. Not the little ones, but the little ones are okay. But they did those huge ones. Uh, Archie, Archie and Ruth used to do those. Uh, stress, great stress reliever, uh, and uh, dancing. They used to walk every morning as well. Walking uh, every morning, uh, just walking around the block, going here, here, and there. Uh, exercising, of course, exercising. Big box store, big box stores. Walk around the stores, um, and uh, uh, say, "Hey, uh, no scooters, just walking. You don't have to shop if you don't want to." But the main thing is exercise and go to the park, go to the library. Josh Lodge, good morning. I am great. Glad to see you still with us. God bless and God keep you. You have a great story, Josh. And Crystal Chapman is watching as well. Bless and God keep you. Instant to you is my prayer for you and your family. <coughs> Excuse me. Drink plenty of water. Exercise. Don't put a thing in your, in your lungs. Is that Gail and Gabe is watching on today? Blessing God to keep you and strengthen you is my prayer for you as well. Uh, all those things help with stress. Okay, no stress. Don't worry about things at work on break. Just tuning in. Fantastic thing is you're working. That's fantastic. Man, uh, God is good for you. Good to you. And glad for you to check in and have a fantastic rest of the day. Rest of the night, morning, day. Uh, for, uh, for your job today. And you have a fantastic time in that. And bless the people, uh, Josh. Bless you and bless you. Um, also, cancer fighting. How do we fight cancer? Uh, well, you got to eat right. You got to stay out of the smoke. Uh, stay out of tobacco. No drinking. Cut down on the drinking. Red meat. Cut down on the red meat. More vegetables and more fruits. Uh, look at your history. If the people in your family have a uh, uh, history of uh, cancer, chances are you, you have it too, but it's just dormant. So you need to go get it checked out. And you can do that. Have a test done. Doc's going to ask you how you're doing. When was the last time you smoked? He's going to ask you all, he or she going to ask you all of those questions. So I need you to be on top of it. Tell them the truth about it. And then eat more, eat more vegetables, eat more, drink more juice or eat more uh, fruit. Um, and know your heredity. Know what, how your family doing in your uh, history of cancer in your family. Uh, less red meat, tobacco smoking. No, don't put anything in your lungs. Nothing in your lungs but oxygen. Okay, otherwise you're gonna have that machine working for you, and that's not what we want to want to do at all. Okay, we want to protect our lungs and take care of our lungs on today. All right, so you got the cancer, you got the stress, you got the diabetes under check, and you will live a long, prosperous life. All right, we believe in prevention, so I'm giving you that on today. God bless the guy. Keep you if you're listening to us. Praise God. God is good. Okay, more water, more water, more water. Okay, and mir- we believe in miracles. We believe in prophecy, healing, and miracles. We believe in all those things on today. Now, our subject again is how do we get this straight? How do we get this right? <coughs> I want to hire, I want to move to the next plane. I want to move to the next highest plane. We're going to talk a little bit about that in just a little bit. But first, I, I, if you want anybody, uh, if you need anybody that needs prayer, I want you to be with me right now. No matter what time, what day it is, uh, we're praying for them right now. Okay, I ask the great and see healing force to remove all obstruction from my mind and body and to restore me to perfect health. I ask this in all sincerity and honesty and I will do my part. I ask this grant and see healing force to help both present and absent ones who are in need of help and to restore them to perfect help. I put my trust in the love and power of God. Father, we come to say thank you. Bless you right now, Father. Thank you for lifting us up. Thank you for keeping us in our right mind. Thank you for keeping us right now. Continue to deliver us. Continue to speak to us right now. It's our prayer. Mm, we give all our problems and, and 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 troubles over to you right now, Father. You are the deliverer. You are the healer. You are the source of everything. We say thank you, Lord, for that. And continue to keep us mm, under your wing is our prayer. Those that need healing, heal them. Those that need delivering, deliver them is our prayer. Mm, those that need uh, to be free, free them is our prayer right now. Mm, those in the hospital. We ask that you uh, heal them. Those that are incarcerated, we ask that you free them right now. Mm. Those that can't find their way, 
Hey, bless them right now, Father. Give them a path. Those that are hanging on, Father, we speak healing to them right now in the name of Jesus. Mm, keep us. It's our prayer. Continue to work a miracle in our lives. It's our prayer. And we thank you for that in the name of Jesus. You are the deliverer. You are the healer. You are everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, Lita uh, Le- uh, Holiday. God bless you, Dr. Holiday. Fantastic woman of God. Blessing, God. Keep you. Thank you for joining me on today. Uh, we lift you up in, I, can't, I don't want to say where you are, like maybe Kansas City. But we bless and God. Keep you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your energy that we feel on today. Thank you for bringing that positive energy with you on today. And Josh, God bless and God keep you as well. Uh, everybody that's listening on today. So today on our prayer, we'll go to our prayer list now. Yep. On our prayer list now. I'm working this solo on today, y'all. Yes, I am. Our prayer list, uh, Donna Reed. God bless and God keep you and strengthen you. Speak healing for you on today. Uh, Lucretia L. Smith, Pastor Lucretia L. Smith. I'm going to this list right here. Bless and God keep you and all those that are concerned about you. Uh, don't forget about the daughter and the granddaughter. I hear the Spirit saying, bless and God keep you as well. Reverend Norris uh, and Oh, okay. Angela and Betty in Virginia, blessed and God keep you. Jamia Martin used to be with River Jordan. You came in my spirit on today. God bless and God keep you. River Jordan Ministries, Pastor Gerald Scunnies and the First Lady, bless and God keep you. Pastor Joyful Judy, Aries Porter and family, um, bless and God keep you. MJ and Giovanni, Reverend Shirley Hayson and the El Shaddai family. Uh, Pastor Martinez, blessing God keep you. Aisha Green, um, Aisha, all of them, blessing God keep you and strengthen you. Is my prayer for you on today. Uh, Pastor Lily Moore of Two Zion, I'm praying for you on today as well. Leon Chapman, Mabel Chapman, Quincy uh, Chapman, Shirley's Macklin, Naomi, blessing God keep you. Is my prayer for you. Uh, Mother Neil, you know, I missed. Uh, uh, Mother Macklin, the other day, blessing God, keep you, strengthen you, is my prayer for you as well. Um, uh, at uh, God, God over everything, Center of Hope Ministries, Reverend Riley, Mrs. Riley, Rudia, Nurse Morgan, uh, all of Charlotte, all of Reverend Charlotte's, blessing God, keep you, strengthen you, is my prayer. Reverend Gray, mighty woman of God, it's my prayer for you. The Green family. Down in Southern Illinois, bless the guy. Keep you enjoy. We got your uh, picture. I wish I could hold it up and then bring it up. <coughs> but we bless you and thank you for that uh, wonderful painting. Bless the guy. Keep you. God can ministries uh, stronger than than ever before. Mother Green's First Lady Green, Celeste Green, Destiny, all of them. We lift you up. If you ever down in Southern Illinois, look them up. Uh, God can ministry, Minister Zach. Uh, Green, blessing God, keep you. Dan Norman and family, entire family pulled off a fantastic party the other day. Blessing God, keep you. 103 and free for his mother. Uh, bless and my aunt, blessing God, keep you and strengthen you. Is my prayer for you and everybody down there in Newton that are listening right now, even on the Chapman side of the family. Blessing God, keep you. If you're a Chapman, blessing God, keep you. If you're Norman, blessing God, keep you and strengthen you. Down in Phoenix, we lift you up as well. All the Chapman's down there. We lift you up as well. My Audubon family. Of course, it just keeps getting longer. Audubon family, blessing God, keep you. Javier, I haven't heard from you in a while, but God bless you and your family as well. Uh, also, the people in, in Kankakee, I can't forget them. Doing a fantastic job uh, with men and working with young people, keeping it going, and fantastic things are coming out of Kankakee. Uh, Right now, we say thank you, Lord, for that. Also, um, Mayor Pete, uh, Minister Cephas, and Minister Tony, fantastic doing, fantastic things going on in there. Blessing God, keep you real, real good is my prayer. If you'd like to be on our prayer list, 708 752 Say, I want to be on that prayer list. Uh, Minister Dion, I'm calling you a minister now, Mr. Dion. Down in Kentucky, blessing God, keep you and your family. Uh, I'm praying for your husband as well. We lift him up on today as well. So, like to be on our prayer list, let me know. 708 752 
Uh, okay, Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, good morning, Donald Hall, rich man. God bless and God keep you. Thank you for joining me on today. Prayers to you and your family, Mr. Donald. One of my uh, ex players doing a fantastic job uh, with his life and with his family and his business. We speak prayers for your business as well. Also, um, we lifted a lot of people up. Of the book fair was also all my the writers that were at the book fair. We lift you up as well. Uh, that at the Madison Library, Maisha, God bless and God keep you, Maisha. On today, you up tonight. You got to go to work tomorrow. Blessing, I keep and strengthen you. Is my prayer for you. Stay focused. And uh, boy, there's a. Uh, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about fasting for you. Uh, I want you to fast a little bit for you to get your uh, get this all this gook out uh, of your body and your mind, uh, my issue. So that's for you. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Praying for you and your daughter as well. All right, all's well. Keep her covered is my prayer. And let nothing follow her uh, that's not good. That's not good. Keep her head up and keep her uh, centered is my prayer for, for her. Amen. Amen. All right, so I want you to be strong, okay? So the, I'm going to read the uh, the creed, and uh, this is from, uh, the, I think I did everything except for the I am's. I, okay. Okay. The source, the I am. Amen. The I am's, all right? So I am great. I am what not. Quave, uh, he, he posted this. It went, I don't want to say viral, but it, it did get out there. Uh, also, uh, Loretta Mays, I'm praying for you as well. Keep up the good work. Keep up. Keep going. Uh, and uh, we wrap you in a, a pink light of love as well. Okay. So, uh, Quave did the I am. And that's fantastic. I am great. I am wonderful. I am beautiful. I am handsome. All the I am. The connected. All the things that are positive, not negative. I am rich. Whew. Man, you got to say that. I am a miracle. I am courageous. I am a believer, I am sane, I am healed, I am intelligent, I am awesome, I am energy, I am spirit, I am fearless, I am productive, I am ready, I am confident, I am powerful, I am strong, I am free. 103 and free, I am free. I am the test, I am the book, I am the job, I am the payroll manager, I am all of that, all that connecting with the source, and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot fail. I cannot. Impossible. Okay? So I want you to, I am that I am. Connect with the I am. When you start feeling low, feeling like you can't make it, I'm telling you, you're walking evidence that God never fails. He's brought you out a lot of things. You say, how did I get here? Because God is protecting you. He's lifting you up. But we need to go the next mile. We're going to do that in just a minute when I read the scripture for you. We're going to go the next mile. But right now, God is awesome. So Ross, uh, Elder Ross, and Elder Chapman, blessing God keep you in certain music as well. Okay. Reverend Polins, God bless and God keep you as well. And, and your church family, we lift you up on today as well <coughs> fantastic program stay centered you have uh special people that help you and i'm going to continue to do that on today the creed i'm gonna read this this is 52 things to cultivate it's my book you go to lulu.com and get it can you read that it's backwards okay so it says whoever has whoever was begotten by pure love and came desired and welcome into life is of immaculate conception. He whose heart is full of tenderness and truth could be he or she whose heart is full of tenderness and truth who loves mankind more than he loves himself. Good morning, Nikki Fuller. Blessing God keep you. And cannot find room in heart for hate. 
may be another Christ. We all may be the saviors of the world if we believe in the divinity which dwells in us and worship it and nail our grosser selves, our grosser self, the stuff that keeps us back, that holds us down, whew, our grosser selves, our tempers, greed, and our unworthy aims upon the cross. Nail all of that on the cross. Who gives love to all, no matter what, pays kindness for unkindness, smiles for frowns, and lends new courage to each fainting heart, and strengthens hope and scatters joy abroad. He, too, is a redeemer, son of God. Actually, he or she is a redeemer, son of God. What are you talking about? You got to live right. Oh, they may be right there. You see, now, if you see anybody that just have that glow, that kindness, and that kindness in their heart, they would rather do for other people than to do for themselves. They pray for the world. You have people that do that. They pray for the world, not just for themselves, but they pray for the people down the block. They pray for the people that's across the street, people that can't make it, the people that, that are falling down, the people that are begging, the people that don't have any place to live, the people uh, that service your children every day, the people that cover them, the, the principals that don't get any glory, the uh, 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 the teachers that, that they don't get paid enough. They pray for all of them. They're doing things uh, beyond themselves. The people that give you a break when you shouldn't get a break. The people uh, that bring you food when you're hungry. The people just knock and see and text and ask you, how you doing today? Them. That's love. Okay? Love for no reason. Well, you hurt me, but they smile anyway. They let God take care of them. Well, you're not doing right. They don't, they don't blaspheme you. They don't jump down your throat. They say God is good and God will take care of that. That's what they say. That's how they do it. Well, you did me wrong. Well, they know they did you wrong. But you don't scream and cuss them out. That's not what happened. Mm -mm. You live right. You do what's right. You sacrifice. And God will reward you. Oh, yeah. The king's ransom. He will do that for you. All right, so the the getting back and, and, and all of that, but there are people who just have that love, something about them, something about her, something about him. They just have it, and it's just glowing. It may even be a little baby. You ever seen that happen before? <coughs> <coughs> little baby. Maybe a grown man, maybe an older man. Come on, miss, I just got to help you. You ever did that before? Come on, sir, I just got to help you because you're doing a fantastic. I don't know what it is. But I just have to do it for you. Now, you don't know who they are, but that comes out of you. They, they spark something in you, not for money. This is, you just do it because you feel like doing You feel like it, it cover just a special person, special child. You keep them covered. Pray for them. They You don't know why God has them on, on this earth, but they have favor with the master and it shows. So what about you? What is your favor and how come it's not showing? Well, how come it's not doing what it's supposed to do? Well, there may be something that you have to do. You may have to fast a little bit. You may have to change what you, what you uh, take in. You may have to kind of uh, change your ways just a little bit, tweak your mode of operation instead of cursing, yelling and screaming. Okay, um, you may have to calm down and, and use a little love, use a little love. But let me remind you that even if people take advantage of you, because I hear what you're saying, Good morning, Lucretia L. Smith II. I hear what people are saying. So people will take care, take advantage of you, Prophet. They will take advantage of you, Doc. They will they will keep you keep their foot on their head on your head if they can. But there is a God that looks over you. Hmm. When you do right, when you show love, they can't battle that. They can't quit that. They can't do that. They can't live with that. They can't live with that. So your idea is to do right. Love them anyway. Say a prayer. Bless them, Lord. And, and, and when you when you read the word, you'll see that in a lot of cases, they'll say, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They don't even know that they, they're hurting a man or a woman of God. They don't know what they're doing. And your job is to pray for them and go through. You, you don't know they may be another savior for the world. You don't know. 
You don't know, okay? But your idea is to say, God bless them. Something about them. There was a little girl who uh, who was in, who was that? I don't pray for all my cousins in uh, Rock Island, that fort, in that, in that uh, in the Quad City area. Um, there was a little girl who, for some reason, was attracted to me. She was little, she was about, I don't know, she was about four, three, three or four, two or three or four years old. <clears throat> and she was attracted. Good morning, Dr. Holiday. And she was attracted to she was attracted to me. And we went to this, this uh birthday celebration. And she was attracted to me. She gave me her best. She gave me her dolls. She gave me her doll uh stuff. Just the whole. Never seen me before. In church, we were in church, she gave it to me the whole. And she shared that. And her countenance her countenance uh, was uh, uh, fantastic. It was just an aura around her. Now, why she gave it to me, uh, the Lord knows. Okay, I'm going to tell you because my son was getting ready to have a baby. He was, but I didn't know uh, the time or date or anything like that. But the little girl, she honored me with her stuff. And you know, kids don't give away their dolls. They don't give away their stuff. They don't not just give it to anybody. All right. So she, she was, and then she followed me. And I was, uh, I think I was praying for the food at the thing. And she came right up to the microphone, stood right by me. Never seen it before ever, but it was something about her. So what do you do about that? You just accept what's going on and you thank the Lord for the, the encounter because you never know. She's praying for you. You don't know why God put that put her in your in your uh environment at that particular time but you thank God for the encounter cuz you never know who who she may be you know who you are but you never know who she may be then you bless her you do and keep her covered that's the job you don't just say oh baby go sit down come get this baby you don't want to do that you don't want to push back your blessing you want to uh bless the encounter and then we get back home we found that my son was having a little girl the next day. Was that amazing? That was amazing to me. Uh, and the attraction was that she's going to be a blessing too. Now, that's the kind of encounter that comes about when people love God and two spirits meet. Hey, they begin to bless. All right. Don't the the sadness about man is that they don't pay attention to the signs. They forget the dreams. They don't write them down. They ignore nature. Birds can land right on their, on their doorstep. Birds can land right on the car and they still wouldn't pay attention. To, What's that all about? Birds, nature, cross their paths. They still forget. They dream and still forget. Well, they don't pay attention. I'm saying pay attention. Lift your mind. We're going to talk about lifting your mind up so you can heed those things. You can pay attention. You'll be closer to the source onto that. Yeah. Okay. So God bless and God keep you in the studio. I think I did everything. I did, I did, I did the prayer. I did all of that. So we're going to go to the words. 12, 20, it's uh, 29 minutes. So we're going to go to Daniel. I'm going to talk a little bit about Daniel. Let me get on, so I can tell you what Daniel means. <coughs> yeah. Just a second. So I want to get this right on you. Thank you for uh, joining me on today. Wherever you are in the world, we pray for those who didn't make it yet. They'll catch it later. Okay. Now, if you're reading this later, that doesn't uh, stop you from being with us, okay? So we bless all the ministers, every rabbi, every rabbi, every minister, every uh, mosque, uh, every uh, place of worship of uh, that worship God. We bless them on today, all right? So Daniel symbolizes pure judgment, pure judgment, okay? Pure judgment, that conscious uh, integrity, Pure judgment. That's Daniel. Okay. Um, and uh, he's going to, I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the point where he was blessed. And how could he interpret dreams? And how could he go through all these things? And how powerful was it? Because <coughs> he did not allow himself to be defiled. He did not. 
We're going to talk about that. We said, what do you mean defiled? He didn't eat everything. He didn't drink everything. He didn't want to be like everybody else. He was set aside and he wanted to be set aside. And some of us don't want to give up. Some of us don't want to, uh, don't want to uh, give up. Some of us don't want to, um, let go of the things that of the, of the world. We don't, we don't we want to keep the world, uh, in our in our bodies and our surroundings and do what the world does. But I'm saying at some point, if you want to be closer to the master, you have to set yourself aside and don't do the same things that everybody else does. Okay, and we're gonna talk about Daniel. That's how he did what he did. That Daniel, the first chapter. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I have to drink some water. That's a reminder. Drink water, Chapman. Drink water. I'm drinking water. What made Daniel so powerful in his judgment? And how could he how could he interpret dreams? How could he do those things? Because he set him sad, set his sad, set himself aside. I'm reading the uh King James Version today, okay? Which which sounds a little different for me. Okay. But stay with me. This is chapter one of Daniel, okay? And I'm gonna start uh I guess I, I like to, I guess I start the first verse so we can get some background. Okay. In the third year of the reign of uh Jehoiakim, king of Judah came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. Third year, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Trinity. And the Lord gave Jeho Jehoiakim, king of Judah, unto the hand with part of of the vessels of the house of God which he carried into the land of Shion, Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Asher, Ashpenes, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. Certain people he wanted. He said, I want certain people. I, is that okay? That's fine. It's just like you. So if you're, if you're a boss, you want certain people. You don't want just anybody around you. You want certain people. If you're a pastor, of course, you want certain people around you. If you're a prophet, you want a healer. You want certain people, not just anybody, especially not people that are left over from last rain because they may not mess with your spirit. So that's normal for him to do. Children in whom was no blemish. Okay. Uh, so that's the fourth verse. Children in whom was no blemish but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the child. So who are these people? This is the top of the top, the best of the best that he wanted surrounding him as king. And there's nothing wrong with that. So uh, well, how did he pick? Because as the ruler, he wanted the best around him. Now for you, uh, do you have good people around you, even in your family, even in your um, friends? Are they the best of the best? Or are they just people that just left over for somebody else? Or are they are they topping what they do? That's what he wanted. That's what he got. Okay, and the fifth verse, and the and the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and a wine which he drank. So he had meat, the king's meat. Same thing the king was eating. He appointed for them, and the wine he was drinking, he appointed for them. So nourishing them three years that at the end thereof, they might stand before the king. So there's that three again. Don't ignore that. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost don't know the Trinity. At the end of three years, then they're able to stand before the king. Don't you know? You have to have preparation to stand before the master. So before the king. So he was preparing them. The best of the best. Knowledge, wisdom. They had it all. Science. All of that. 
so that in preparing them his his meat and his drink, his wine. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azirah. And we know that that's, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. And to whom the prince and the eunuchs had gave names for he gave unto Daniel the name of Bel and to uh, Hananiah of Shadrach and to Mishael Meshach to Ezra Abednego. So you heard those names before. I'm not going to I'm not going to assume you have, but they changed their names. It's okay. And when you change names, let's get to this for just a second. When you change names, that means that you've been elevated to something better than where you were before. You always want to, if you're going to change the name, if you're going to add a name, you got to go up a little higher. So if you were Reverend, now you, uh, uh, well, if you were a minister, now you're Reverend. You minister, pastor, pastor, and so forth. The name changes means elevation. So if you're an elder, now you're, you're better than you were before. Your name has changed. Something has happened to transpire in your life as a, a point of reference that you're no longer who you were before, you're a little higher than you were before. <coughs> so it is. There's nothing wrong with when when, uh, when you get your name changed, as long as you change it for a reason, for elevation. All right, so he changed his name. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. Hmm. He said, no, I'm not eating the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. I'm not drinking the wine that the king drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. In other words, I'm not drinking, I'm not eating the meat that the king sent down. I'm not drinking the wine that the king drinks. I don't want to defile myself. Uh-oh. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I need to grow up a little higher than the rest of them. Is that wrong? No, because that's for me. I'm deciding that. Now, God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuch. So whoever was in charge, they had favor. They had a good relationship. They had favor. You have favor with the boss. You have favor sometimes with the boss. You do. So they, or with the pastor, whoever. So they had favor. Uh, and the prince of the eunuch said unto Daniel, man, this is 10th verse. I fear my Lord, the king who hath appointed your meat and your drink, for why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort? In other words, if you don't eat the meat, if you don't do the drink, you're going to look worse than everybody else. Because the, the king is going to be able to tell, and he's going to blame me because I'm in charge of you. Amen. Then shall you make me endanger my head to the king, which will be cut off. All right. The 11th verse says, Then said Daniel to Mel Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Meshach, and Michelle, and Azariah, prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse, which is vegetables, to eat, and water to drink. That's it. Vegetables, water. That's it. In 10 days. And let's see what happens. Now, that's a sacrifice. We don't want to, we don't want to, we don't want to fast. We don't want to, uh, I don't know what we're afraid of. It's just, it's just material that I can't make it if I don't eat. I can't make it if I don't drink. Uh, I've been doing this for years. This is the excuse we hear all the time. I've been doing this for years. Uh, ain't nothing wrong. The fact that it is, you could be better than you are if you sacrifice. You change some things that you should not do. 
Okay. Well, everybody else is. Now here's another one. Everybody else is eating. Everybody else is drinking. How come I can't? Maybe because you have set aside. God has another plan for you. All right. The 13th verse. Then let our countenance be looked upon before thee. In 10 days, look at us and see if we're better or we're worse. Or we worse than we should be. And the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, and as thou sowest, deal with thy servants. Seest, then deal with thy servants. If they look best, better than us, then deal with us. They look worse than us, deal with us. We look the same, then deal with us on that, on that, on that level. And the 14th verse says, so he consented to them in this matter and proved them 10 days. He allowed them to do this for 10 days. No meat, no wine, only vegetables and only water. Now keep in mind, that's what he did for them. All right. In the 15th verse, and at the end of 10 days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. The 15th verse. They looked better, fairer, than the people that ate the meat, the king's meat. Thus, Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them vegetable pulse. As for, as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in, in all visions and dreams. Whoa, he had moved up another level. He had moved up another level, higher plane. We, we call it a higher spiritual plane because he had sacrificed. He didn't want to defile his body. Now, um, how important is that? Well, how clear do you want to be in your messages? How clear do you want to be in your dreams? How clear do you want to be um, in your speaking, in your singing, in your preaching? How fair do you want? How good do you want to be in that? How close to the master do you want to be? Well, there may be some sacrifices and some stuff you have to do. You have to kind of get rid of the the material stuff, the flesh stuff, the alcohol, the tobacco, oh, and all the stuff that everybody else is doing so you can stand out. So your continence will be a little bit clearer. So you can be better than you were before. That is the sacrifice. Well, how often do I have to do it? Well, until your continence changes, okay? Then look, what he, they were added knowledge and skill at all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Why was that important? Because he has to come up in the next chapter. He has to come up and he has to interpret a dream for the king. Amen. Amen. So what do I have to do to, to better myself and get a little bit closer to the master? How do I have to do uh, some stuff that comes up and I can't, I can't decipher the messages that just go over my head. I have to ask somebody else. No, you don't. No, you don't. You have to ask the master to free you from some of the stuff that you do, so you can be so you can be better than you are right now. Even though that you shouldn't have to get sick to understand that I have to give some stuff up, give some stuff away. I do. I can't do it anymore because it is it hampers whatever God wants me to do. The first thing when I you can see this in my book. Uh, 52 Things to Cultivate, uh, when I got a message from uh, Pastor L.L. L. Smith, when I was only like 12 or 13 at the time, and I came into the gift shop, they had a gift shop, I came to the candy shop, I was going over there to get candy, and that was the first thing, uh, the first chapter of my book, uh, I said, oh my God, Pastor L.L. L. is in there, uh, I got to clear my brain, clear my mind, see what's going on, I just, but I really want this candy, I'm going in there anyway. I went in there when nobody had never heard of it, and she said, oh, Michael, uh, I got this see you. She said, prophet walks in. I was like, what? She said, oh, you're going to be a prophet. I said, what? 
I, in my brain, I was saying that. What? But I wasn't saying that out loud. I just said, yes, ma'am. So she said, because she carried that kind of weight. And she said, now I'm going to tell you, you can't drink, can't smoke, can't do any of those things. I was like, I'm only 12 or 13. What are you, what are you talking about? <coughs> I don't even have a girlfriend. What are you talking about? I haven't even began to live yet. I was, uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm just uh, becoming a, a, I think I don't even know I was in high school. Yeah, I'm like, what are you talking about? And my brain was saying that. I wasn't saying that to her. I was in my brain, what are you talking about? But what she was saying is that where you're going, what you're going to have to do, you have to give some stuff up. You can't be like everybody else. You want to be clear, especially I do. I want the spirit to talk to me. And I want to be clear in what I see, what I hear, and what I do. So how you do that? Well, some things you have to put aside. You can't be like everybody else. You may want to. And you, yeah, I tried. Okay, well, I, well, what she was talking about, I don't know what she was talking about. So I'll try that. But it didn't work out for me. It did not work out for me. It's better that I am. And I don't want my body to be defiled. What does that mean? I don't want my body to be like everybody else. I just eat meat, 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 just to eat it. Uh, and uh, uh, we talked about diabetes. We talked about cancer. We talked about uh, stress and all those things. You cannot be under that and then work for the master too. You cannot. Can you imagine being stressed out and then trying to work for the master? How is that looking? What's going on? You are already stressed and you're trying to work out for the master and they're asking you to come up and have work. And you're not ready yet. So you got to be full of meat, full of stuff, uh, full of alcohol. And then you're going to give a message for the master, not working out, not working out. So you want to be more like Daniel in terms of, I'm not going to do this. More like um, uh, the, his followers and his friends, Meshach uh, and Abednego, all of them. And then, hey, Clear your mind. Clear your body of all of that. Clear your mind. What happens when you get sick? Well, you may need to shed some stuff. <coughs> all sickness is not to death. You may need to shed some stuff so you can get higher in the spirit and higher on the next plane and be one with the master. You may need to do that. And sometimes you go, sickness comes so that you can clear all of that. I've seen people do that. They go, they come in, they go in messed up in the hospital and come back out clearer than they were before, cleaner than they were before, looking better than they were before. And why is that? Because the Lord said, you have to get, yeah, if you don't do it, I'm going to do it for you. You have to get along, get where you are because I'm getting ready to fix your body so you can be able to do greater things. Receive that. I was saying, well, I'm, uh, I don't want to, I'm continuing to eat stuff that I'm not supposed to eat, continue to eat pork, I'm continuing to eat this, I'm continuing to eat that, I'm continuing to eat this, I'm continuing to drink, I'm continuing to smoke, I'm continuing to do all those things, defile the body, but the body needs help to get to do the work of the master, and then to get your continence changed, so you can draw that, draw the people that need help, and then you'll be able to have what you need, have what you need, let me read this last verse again, Okay, go. Cool. What happened to Daniel? And as for these four children, including Daniel, um, uh, God gave them knowledge and skill and learning, and that's all skill and learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. It can happen to you. It can happen to you. It can happen to you. And you pray that, Lord, if it's not good for me, don't let it take that taste away. That's, that's your prayer. Lord, if it's not good, but take that taste away. Lord, I don't want to be bound to this. Lord, help me. Get this. Then you're still hobbling. You're still uh, not making it. Your body's breaking down, but you have to give some stuff up. And maybe the very thing that you like, the very thing that you love, that you have to give up. You do. Because God wants to use you. He wants to attract you what you need. And you want to work for the master, but be on the top of your game if you want to work for the master. Be on top of it. Be on top of your game. You want all wisdom, all knowledge. You want it to come from the master. You do. You do. So I'm praying for you on today. I am. Why do I have to give up, though? What do I have to do? You have to give some things up to live right. Don't defy your body. Uh uh. Uh uh. Be clear in the master. So your dreams will be clear. In the next chapter, you're going to see. Uh, and you read that in the second chapter, he was asked to come because the king was getting ready to kill everybody who he called that could not interpret his dream. 
But thank God for Daniel who came and did the job for him because he was able, he was prepared. He was, he was prepared. Higher judgment, mm. pure judgment, discernment, all of those things that God gave to him. And why not you? He can do that. But there's been some sacrifice. It does. That's a sacrifice. And they did, they sacrificed. Thank God for, for the wisdom that uh, Daniel had. And said, oh, we're not going to do that. Not for us. Me and my crew right here. We're not. We're not going to do that. We're not going to take that. Well, and, and, and the jailer's like, wait a minute. You're getting me in trouble. Because you're going to look like you, you haven't eaten. You're going to look like you're not good. And he said, Test us in 10 days. New cycle. 10, 1. New cycle. 10 days. New cycle. 10 is 1. A new cycle. Test us in 10 days and see what we look like. My blessings to you and everybody that's listening on today. Be encouraged. Hey, be encouraged. Do what God has for you to do. Be on his program regardless uh, love, make yourself happy every day. Continue to lift yourself up and help those that need help is my prayer. Every fourth Saturday, 257 West 48th Place in Chicago uh, is our fourth Saturday service. We'll have first Saturday, fourth Saturday service after Thanksgiving. Bring your friends over, bring your family over. 257 West 48th Place in Chicago. We'll have a great time uh, on fourth Saturday in November. So come out. Uh, and before that, November 18th, I will be with the whole, ooh, I'll be at the Holiday Inn and Riverfront in Milwaukee, uh, Wisconsin. Come on up, get us close enough to drive if you can, or fly uh, for a, a day of prophecy and day of uh, wellness. Yeah, that's Sunday. November 8th, 19th, um, 10 o'clock to 5 o'clock. I speak at 11 o'clock. Come on by. I'll be there all day signing books, uh, giving you a word. Come on by. That's a, a whole Holiday Inn Riverfront in Milwaukee, e, 10 o'clock to 5 p.m. on Sunday. like to see you there. All right, church, come on. Drive up. It's always close. We'll have a good time. God bless and God keep us in strength you. This is my prayer. Praying for everybody at the sound of my voice that you be lifted up, you be healed, you be delivered, and God shows favor on you. See you next time.